As many have mentioned on this program, Dalton McGuinty won the leadership of the Ontario Liberal Party in 1996 after finishing fourth on the first ballot in that year's leadership contest. The man who led on the first ballot back in 1996? None other than our next guest, Gerard Kennedy, who joins us now from Toronto. And Gerard, I point that out to say that, uh, you know, in the, in the weekend's voting, you're sitting there in the third spot, and I'm betting you're saying that uh, that's just as good a spot as any, I suppose, to be in at this point. I, I thought I'd try a new strategy, for sure. A new strategy. Well, let, let me ask you, because you've had the experience from 96, and of yep. course you've had the experience at the, 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 uh, the federal Liberal campaign that uh, Dion, uh, Stéphane Dion won, um, give me your insights on, on that, where you sit now, how that might play going forward, what happens for your campaign sort of from a strategic sense in trying to get more votes? Well, I mean, it's, it's different for me, just to make it personal. I, both times I ran before, I ran as a bit of an outsider, a little bit audaciously. I was two months into politics, I think, when I ran the first time, and I ended up uh, right on the final ballot after, I think, the fifth ballot before uh, it was resolved. And in the second time, by two votes, just missed going forward in terms of being ahead of Mr. Dion. So, you know, I, I think this time I'm working with people that I know well, people that um, I am coming back to work with, but uh, people who also appreciate that uh, there's a recognition for me within the party and without uh, in terms of being there for renewal and maybe bringing the, the party uh, a fresh outlook uh, as somebody who's been away for five years. So, you know, I need now to make the connections with all of the delegates uh, in a way that perhaps I, I wasn't as successful doing in other leaderships. And I think obviously everyone's going to do that, but I, am, I really have an appreciation of, of uh, the need for that and, and how you go about it. And uh, I, I know for people on the outside, it's a bit frustrating because there are now 2,500 delegates that get to be the decision makers. But, I, you know, everybody will surface at the convention. And I think by then people will see what the main themes are uh, and not all of which have come forward yet in terms of, of you know, ver which way the party wants to go. Uh, we saw, of course, uh, Glenn Murray uh, drop out of the race last week and, and decide to endorse another candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you, if you've been having some discussions at all uh, in any way, shape or form with some of the folks, uh, Eric Hoskins, Charles Souza, some of the folks who, who didn't get as many delegates yeah. over the weekend. You know, I, I, one thing about this race is because we are in government and we are hoping to earn back the respect to continue there. It, unity is a big deal. So everyone's talking to everybody. And I, I don't think there's anything unique about it. I, I've talked to every one of my colleague candidates and I'm uh, going to continue to do that uh, over the next number of days. And uh, but, but also, given the shortness of the contest, we've got to be talking to one another. We've got to be talking to delegates. We've got to be able to probably articulate a little bit more about what this race is about as the days go through as well. So, And uh, you know, I think that uh, there'll be lots of discussion in, in the next few days. If there was any commentary on surprises as a result of the, uh, the way the delegate vote turned out over the weekend, mm -hmm. uh, maybe Harinda Tekar doing as well as, as he did. As you looked at the results, was there anything that jumped out, uh, jumped out for you? Well, not, not really. It's a, little, it's a different dynamic in some respects. I think that there's, you know, congratulations to the folks for their outcomes. I think there's a lot of people that, that if not surprised, at least show, had a strong showing. And this is the next few weeks are about reconciling those strong showings. What does it really mean? There's no clear winner, and, the, and, and in fact, the front runners are a little bit behind where front runners have been before. And the question is, you know, where does the party, on reflection, uh, really want to end up? And uh, you know, each of the people who are running will have some say in that, and the people supporting them will, and the orientations that they've taken on towards how the party should be, I think, will be very important over the next little while. But. Uh, you know, uh, it, it was some strong running. I was, you know, all of us were, were feeling that in on the trail. So, uh, you know, there's going to be some real dynamics there. That's the interesting thing about delegated conventions is that they really do require now people to be talking to one another. And it's going to be uh, almost always an interesting and, and if you follow form that it's had before a surprising outcome. Let's, let me ask you about one of the big issues for the government that has been in the middle of this campaign, and that, of course, is the relationship with the elementary school teachers. Uh, I think you're the, pretty much the only one of the leadership candidates on record that says uh, Bill 115 is not a good idea, and you'd take a different approach. Do you think that's, that can help separate you, perhaps, uh, from the pack and win you some folks who may think it's not the greatest idea in the world, maybe to pick a fight with uh, a union group that's traditionally been a friend of the Liberal Party of Ontario? Well, I don't think it's so much of a picking a fight. I think it's about why you would get into a fight when you, you can solve it otherwise. We need to be working to resolve the deficit. To do that, we need to be working in a, in a partnership that I think we uniquely can do. And for eight and a half out of nine years, to give Mr. McGinney and others credit, that that was a very high-level working partnership, delivered results like a, having the dropout rate, 
Uh, there's some accolades out there from the OECD that say that we got the best uh, education system now in the English speaking world, the fastest improved. And so those things you don't want to lose. You don't want to give them up, certainly, if there's another way to do it. And as the minister that set up the original working relationship, not just the ETFO, but with all the different federations, I think there's, there's, we want to have a substantial agreement on how we're moving forward. And it, it won't, I don't change the dollar thing very much at all. It's a question of getting goodwill. And goodwill is, is something that is not about agreeing to everything that people want. It's, it means treating people with respect. It means making things work. It means uh, engaging people because, you know, that's, that's the, it, what happens in schools. The teachers got to be able to teach, very motivated from the front of the class. Education workers are in key support roles. And we're going to need a lot of understanding as we try and trim down to meet the deficit in, in a few years' time. So, uh, and that will be also true in healthcare and the broader public sector. So I see Bill 115 as an approach I understand, but which I, I take a little bit of exception to because I think there's a, there's a bigger prize, and that prize is to be able to run the government in a transformative way, the way we're challenged by Mr. Drummond, the way that the past Mr. Martin did, uh, to get at uh, an equilibrium. And, and that's what I think Liberals can do if we keep people on board. So. Uh, yes, I am prepared to, to take another um, run at that, and I think I'll get a result just as good or better for the taxpayers, for the public, uh, and for students, and for teachers and education workers. I think they understand. They know the Treasury uh, has, has a challenge right now. Well, Gerard Kennedy, best of luck going ahead through to January 26th, and we'll see you at the convention, if not sooner. Great. Thanks very much for having me here today.